let's see here. So I have the solution, and I won't always go over the solution, but today, since I have it, I'll show it to you guys. If I can get it to work. Let's see here. Turn off the lights here for a second. Now, I wrote the solution in a hurry. There's a chance I'm wrong. All right, so, <clears throat> I mean, don't give up hope just yet. But, um, so here, this is, okay, so I look at this graph and it jumps off the page at me. This is either a cosecant or a secant graph because that's what those look like. It's not a cotangent, it's not a tangent, those are you know, they keep going and going and they cross the x-axis, right? But the reciprocal functions, they don't hit a certain band of values, right? Because basically, since, since sine and cosine are stuck between plus or minus one, the reciprocals have to be beyond those values, right? Um, so that's one of like the key features of cosecant or secant graphs. And this one, I noticed that I've got vertical, I got these vertical asymptotes at like zero, at pi, at two pi, at minus pi, at two pi, so I'm like, well, that's where sine is zero, right? So this is like a one over sine graph. And, but on the other hand, it's not quite that because these, these twos here, right? It starts at two. So um, the, plane secant, the plane cosecant graph starts at one, right? So to get it to two, I just multiply by two. That's my logic for coming up with this formula. So I think it's right. You're close. Think. You're in the hunt. Oh, secant. Well, but it's in the right family, right? I mean, it's like you're hunting for a murderer and you've accused his brother. It's pretty good. I mean, it's not, not good for him, but, you know. Um, this one here, make sure I'm actually on the screen. I'm sometimes my own worst cameraman. There we go. Okay, so um, <laughs> so how many of you guys got problem number two? Anybody? Let's see one? No. I left it. I didn't put it at Yeah, well, I take one over cosine. I think that's that's legit. That's fine. Um, you know, simplification is always in the eye of the beholder. But the main thing here was to identify that you got that sine squared plus cosine squared that you can collapse down, right? That's what you're, you're always kind of looking for in these problems. Or, uh, you know, uh, tangent squared plus one that collapses to secant squared, or the uh, cotangent squared plus one which collapses to cosecant squared, right? One, one of those. Um, anyway, this one. So I just, I, I put tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. Remember the denominator, the denominator is the numerator, so I bring that up here, cosine squared. Um, the one minus cosine squared, I could get, I trade for sine squared, right? I wrote this over here to keep myself on the straight and narrow. The problem I worked out for you guys that worked out to one, I think if you go back and look at that problem, it actually works out to minus one because I didn't have, I didn't have like, I had sine squared minus one, I think, in the end simplification, and I put sine squared minus one was cosine squared, yeah? You're fine. Can I make the top? No, it's it's because it's cosine squared times sine squared. Ah. I need cosine squared plus sine squared to make it one. Um, we'll soon see that there's other things we could simplify cosine squared times sine squared, but not one. It it, it can be simplified to like uh, one quarter sine squared two x, for example. But anyway, getting ahead of the story. So we got cosine squared and um, cosine squared, and I changed my two sine squared to sine squared plus sine squared just to emphasize that I can peel off a one here, you know. Now, if you got to this, if you left your answers like cosine squared plus two sine squared, I'd give you full credit, you know. It's just, I think you can make that extra step, yeah? Okay, so, just that. Um, did I mention these are homework problems? Now, I understand, you're like, but you just announced those homework problems like last night. Fair enough. I didn't give you a lot of time on 7.1, right? But in my defense, I have worked like 
three pretty long examples in class like that at this point, so I, I think you had a shot at them. Um, I, I will try to um, generally not just give you one day notice on the homework, you know. Um, my bad on that. I'm, I'm sorry I did that. I, I don't, I want to give you more time than that. Um, but anyway, um, many of you will just work the homework the day before it goes anyway, so it's really not different. <laughs> no, I'm right. Um, let, let, let me, hopefully I'm wrong, right? Um, so the hypotenuse is oddly the square root of 505. Did you guys get that? Okay, good. And the angle, did you get it? Either 32.28 degrees or 0.5633, roughly, radians. Um, I used the tangent to get it. Of course, you could have used inverse sine or inverse cosine if you wanted, right? Um, so it's just that. Um, problem five was also a homework problem. Um, it's towards the end of one of the sets. Um, this one has been announced for longer than day, right? But um, so this one a little bit requires a little bit of kind of uh, mm, a step out. I don't know what we want to say, but some kind of leap to see. You got to see somehow see a triangle. Right to find an angle, you got a line, right? So what I did was, well, I don't want to work with fractions, so I thought, well, if I plug in x equals minus seven into the equation of the line, that'll give me a nice point. So plugging in x equal to minus seven into this will cancel the seven, and give me three, right? Because minus the minuses cancel, so I get minus seven three is this point, which gives me this nice little triangle right here with the angle I'm after, and then I can just use, well, tangent theta is opposite over adjacent three over seven. I take the inverse tangent, I get the angle. So, so this problem may have seen, seemed very mysterious to you if the first time you saw it was on the quiz, right? But I think you should all see that you have a serious chance at getting this if it appeared on the test, right? Like if I asked a question that is very similar to this on the test, you'd, you'd get it, I, I think. I'm an optimist, you're gonna get it, right? I think we worked this one in class, actually, right? So um, I declare theta is the inverse sine of 1 over x. I take sine of both sides. It gives me sine theta is 1 over x. I say, okay, well, that's opposite of our hypotenuse. So the triangle that you know, represents this substitution is this. Um, the adjacent side, I don't know what it is yet, but I can solve because a squared plus 1 is x squared. So solving for a gives me square root of x squared minus 1. And then going back to the start, I'm trying to calculate cosine theta. So cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which in this case is a over x, which is the square root of x squared minus 1 over x. So this was one of your homeworks, and also I worked it in class. So anyway, any questions? So I did have six problems, right? So even if you see, there's, you know, you only 10 points is 100% here. So you, you could have skipped a problem if you got the other five right. You just still had full credit, right? Um, so anyway. I'll try to do that with the quizzes, give you a little bit of margin so that maybe you can skip one, you know. But um, anyway, that's that. So let me put this away. So um, I want to return to the law of cosines that I did at the end of class last time, right? And um, I want to just try to, uh, well, but what I really want to first revisit is the derivation of the adding angles formula for sine. So let's kind of look at that. Um, so <coughs> here's a reminder. What did we, what were the key things we did last time? We showed that the area is equal to one half a b sine theta, right? If we have a triangle, it's got angle theta and it's got sides adjacent a and b. That's the first thing we did. And we also showed that the 
um, the cosine of a plus b, what was it equal to? Oh, wait a minute. We did sine, didn't we? I'm an idiot. We did sine, the first thing. Sine of a plus b, what was it? It was sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b, right? We worked that out using the fact above, right? Um, and so what I want to do now is I want to make a claim, and let's see if we can work through these a little bit more um, slowly. And my claim is that cosine of theta plus pi over 2 is equal to minus sine theta. And my other claim is that the sine of theta plus pi over 2 is equal to cosine theta, right? And um, I'd like you guys to help me out, help me figure out how we could prove those, those claims. Maybe using the, maybe we could use the sine identity right above to prove them, right? Any ideas? random numbers. So maybe maybe for the second one here, we could try a equals to theta and b equals to pi over 2. See how that goes, right? Because that's what we're after, right? Sine of theta plus pi over 2. What's it equal to? Sine theta uh, cosine pi over 2, right, plus cosine theta sine of pi over 2 by the adding angles formula for sine, right? But what is that? What's cosine of pi over 2? Well, remember, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is is 1. So what's this give us? Cosine theta, right? So there it is. Sine of theta plus pi over 2 is equal to cosine theta, right? This is a direct algebraic proof of that. Um, now, of course, we could also take like a graphical perspective if you wanted to, right? Maybe that maybe that actually be a good exercise for the proof of, of um, well, I'm, we could do that, but let me, let me try to do it with this. Well, how are we going to get our paws on, on this first one? The, do you have any ideas? Yeah, I mean, I, I only have this to work with, right? I need to somehow, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe here's, here's a thought I have. I could look at this as... Um, Theta plus pi over 2, minus pi over 2, perhaps. Right? Let me try that out. A sine of theta is equal to sine of theta plus pi over 2, minus pi over 2. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to set the minus aside for just a second so I don't... We'll, we'll come back to the minus, okay? So then what? I, I can look at I can look at this as A, right? And I can look at this over here as B, right? And then I use the adding angles formula for sine. What do I got? I got sine of theta plus pi over 2, right? Times the cosine of minus pi over 2 plus the cosine of theta plus pi over 2 <clears throat> times the sine of minus pi over 2.
So what's going on here? What's the cosine of minus pi over 2? It's 0, right? So this one's 0. What's the sine of minus pi over 2? It's negative 1, right? So what do we have here? We have minus the cosine of theta plus pi over 2. Hey, that's what we want. So, I mean, I've got the minus on the wrong side, right? But take this, this is equal to that, right? So therefore, cosine of theta plus pi over 2 is equal to minus sine theta. So there you go. There's the other piece in the puzzle here. This is why I got flustered at the end of class, because I knew I couldn't, like, just weave this into, like, the two minutes I had. All right, now let's go back to, um, now that we have all this, <coughs> let us return to the following. Cosine of A plus B, what can we write that as? How about we write it as the sine of a plus b plus pi over 2, right? We can do that. You agree? I mean, we just proved we can do that, right? So then you guys tell me what to do after I do that. Then what should we do? How about this? We think about, you know, let me let me rewrite the uh, let me rewrite the adding angles formula in terms of alpha and beta. Sine of alpha plus beta is sine alpha cosine beta plus cos um, <clears throat> cosine alpha sine beta, right? So with that nomenclature, think of this as beta and think of a as alpha. All right. So what do we got? We've got sine of a, cosine of b plus pi over 2, um, plus the cosine of a, and the sine of b plus pi over 2. But you guys tell me, how can we simplify those ones that are plus pi over 2? What did we just learn? We learned if we've got cosine of theta plus pi over 2, we can trade it for minus sine, right? So this is a minus sine b, right? And this guy over here, what is it? That's going to just be cosine of b. So what do we have in total? We've got cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b, right? So let me, let me summarize here. We have the following two identities. If we have the sine of a plus b, that's sine a cosine b plus the um, Cosine of A times the sine of B, right? Um, I guess it would be useful for me to write for you right now. What happens if we have a subtraction instead of addition? Can you guys tell me how this changes? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll write it out for us. So we have sine A cosine of minus b, right, plus the cosine of a, sine of minus b. So what happens with these minuses? Cosine is even, right? So it absorbs the minus. But sine is odd, so the minus comes out. So what we have 
is sine A cosine B minus cosine A sine B. So there's there's a there's a quick way to write the form write both for, both cases for the formula is to use the plus minus notation right so like using the plus minus notation we just go plus minus oh man this chalk is too slippery today so using the plus minus notation just you know you just put a plus minus here and you put a plus minus over here and that's the identity. Now, how about cosine? Cosine of a plus b, well, we just learned it's cos a cos b, right? Minus sine a sine b. What happens if you put a, what happens if you put a minus there? So we get cos a, cosine of minus b, right? Minus the sine of a, sine of minus b. So what, what happens? The, again, the cosine of minus b is just cosine b again. And the sine of minus b, well, the minus pulls out, right? So in the plus minus notation, if we put plus minus here, we have to put minus plus over here. But those are like the most efficient way of writing the adding and subtracting identities for sine and cosine. All right. Now, <clears throat> um, of course, I showed you last time what I showed you that um, we can use these adding, adding, adding angles identities to do what? To prove the law of cosines. What was the law of cosines? Remember, remember if we have a triangle that's like this, maybe not a right triangle, and we have adjacent sides A and B, angle theta, opposite side C, right? Then the law of cosines what did it say? Yeah, we. Yeah, I won't. I won't go through the. I won't go the. I, I will not go through that. I, that. That derivation I went through slowly, relatively speaking. I'm not going to revisit that one. But you're right. We split it through the center. We made two triangles. We played some algebra games. Eventually, we did what? We used the uh, um, the adding angles formula for cosine. We needed that, right? But we, what we derived was this: that c squared is a squared plus b squared. You're like, well, I recognize that one, right? But then minus 2ab cosine theta. So this right here is the law of cosines. All right? So um, something I should point out before we, before we go any further, like we just proved this theorem. We had to work kind of hard we had to work kind of hard to, to get the sine. Remember this? Let's revisit. Uh, let's see here. We had sine. What was it? Sine of theta plus? No, sine. It was cosine, wasn't it? Curses. I'm trying to remember. Which one we had trouble with? It was the cosine, wasn't it? This one's the one that required thinking. Cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of theta plus pi over 2. Like we had to, we had to do what? We had to like take the sine of theta and add and subtract pi over two. It was kind of weird what we had to do, right? But that's we only had the uh, logically we only had the law of sine, law, the um, adding angles formula for sine, so that we're kind of stuck with that, right? I would like to point out that deriving the identity for this now that we know the adding angles formula for cosine is super easy, right? Because all you got to do is go, oh, okay, well this is cosine theta, um, cosine pi over two minus sine theta, 
sine pi over 2 by the adding angles formula for cosine. But cosine of pi over 2, 0. Sine of pi over 2, 1 equals minus sine theta. See, nice cut and dried linear thinking. No sneaky addition of zero needed, right? This is part of the reason I was having a hard time thinking of that thing at the start of class because this is so ingrained in my mind, this, the, the fact that I know the adding angles formulas. It's hard for me to like, take it away and not use it, you know? I, I cannot emphasize enough that adding angles formulas for sine and cosine are very, very useful for a wide variety of problems like this one. And we'll work more. But before I do that, I think we should talk about the other important law um, for triangles. Um, other than the law of cosines, there's also a law of, actually, I'll, everybody get this? I'm going to erase it. Okay. You're, you got it, Augustine? I, 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 I chopped the A off your name. It's okay? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so what's the law of sines? So suppose you have a triangle, and this is the notation typically used. We call the angles lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c, and we call the, um, oh, wait a minute. No, 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 I'm an idiot. It doesn't matter, really. I'll use capital. I've been using capital for the angles, haven't I? So let me keep doing that. So the side lengths opposite the angles, same letters, but lowercase. Right? I mean, it doesn't really matter which one you use lowercase, which one you use uppercase, as long as you're consistent. All right. So <clears throat> that thing we proved at the start of class last time, area is 1 half AB sine theta. Right? Let's apply it. Let's first apply that, this rule right here to the, uh, this, the, the, this one, the, the angle A. So we have one half, the, well, the area, right, is one half B, C, sine of A, right? So I'm using, I'm using this, this vertex, right, like this one for this, right? Now, we can just as well describe the area of the triangle by this one down here, right? So it's equal to 1 half AC sine B, right? See that? Using this, this one down here, that vertex. And then finally, the vertex C, well, 1 half what? What do I write? So the adjacent sides here are B and A and sine C. All right, using this one. So how can you simplify that expression? Any ideas, guys? I mean, technically, that is the law of sines, but no one writes it that way. It's customary to take that equation and divide by ABC. What happens when you divide by ABC? See what, see what happens? B and C cancel for this one. A and C cancel for this one. A and B cancel for that one. And we're simply left with sine of A over A equals to sine of B over B equals to sine of C over C. This, my friends, is the law of sines. Very, very nice. Divide by half. It's everywhere, so it's nowhere. I mean, you can multiply that by, by half if you want. But. So this is, of course, very useful, right? Because it gives us yet another relation between the sine of the angles in the triangle and the lengths of the sides. And um, I would also point to, I mean, on a, on, a, on, a, on a proof comment level, 
This is really easy to prove. Like compared to law of cosines, this was this was pretty low hanging fruit, right? Law of cosines we had to kind of work at, um, but this one wasn't bad. Let me work an example. So you guys tell me here. Uh, 10, 5, 6, theta, find theta. Find that angle. See, up till now, that would have been a very annoying problem. We could have worked this with right triangle trigonometry, but with the law of cosines, it's like taking candy from a baby. Oh, as I've, I, should, I shouldn't say that. So 5 squared, as long as I haven't written an impossible triangle, I think it's okay. Um, every so often I write an impossible triangle. That's always a bad, a bad thing to do. What's 2 times 5 times 6? 5 times 6 is 30, 30 times 2 is 60, so minus 60 cosine theta. So what we got, we've got uh, 25 plus 36 minus 60 cosine theta. So that gives us, and this is 100 of course, right? So what's 100? So, <coughs> excuse me, cosine theta is 60 cosine theta is equal to 25 plus 36 minus 100. What's that? Is it, thir is it minus 39? Is it minus 40? I don't know, I better, sorry, am I? Is it minus 39? So the cosine of theta is minus 39 over 60. So theta is equal to inverse cosine. Ooh. 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 Why is my cosine negative? I'm a little bit bothered by that. Well, anyway, 39 divided by 60 inverse cosine. Oh, stupid. What do we get? 2.27 radians, which is also known as 130 degrees, All right. which kind of makes sense if you think about how 5 and 6 would work. So I guess the cosine is going to be negative if the angle is what, beyond 90 degrees, right? Because cosine looks like this. So if you're beyond 90 degrees, you're going to get a negative cosine. But anyway, that is the kind of problem we can solve easily with law of cosines. And again, before it would have been a pain. All right, I'll shut up as I am, I believe, a minute over. Just a minute.